This is the second video in the updated series of the Queen chess piece. This first body, the solar body, we did with a revolution. And we're going to cut the crown as shown in uh, this diagram on the left, this drawing, with a series of arcs. It's going to have a scalloped look to it. So the first thing we need to do is to create a work plane. So we need a plane that sits above the queen, the queen's head, to be accurate. And we're going to use that to cut down. So to do that, we first need to create an offset plane. And under the option of work planes, you can see there's quite a few offsets, generally the first one. And I'm actually going to use uh, an offset plane from the very bottom plane which happens to also be an origin plane. So I could go about that a couple different ways. And where do I want this? Well, I know the height of this guy is 58 millimeters. So that's as good a place as any. I have my work plane here. I'm going to go ahead and sketch right on it. Now, what's important here is not the diameter of any arcs that we're going to use, but really I want to project existing geometry from the queen. Um, it's really hard to tell looking from the top down which uh, circle I actually need to bring into this sketch. So I'd like to tilt it to the side so I know exactly what I'm looking at. So that's the circle I need. I'm going to create another um, guide circle here and I'm going to do it as a construction circle. And I'm just going to set it right here for now. Now, if I look over here, I can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 arcs on the outside. And then adjoining arcs on the inside that are, and they look all equal to me. Um, there's a guide here that says 172.3 um, is kind of a guide of the size of that arc. That doesn't give me any specific dimensions other than that which is okay. So I'm not going to worry about dimensions right now. I'm just going to worry about getting my shapes in here. Now, the way I'm going to do it, I'm actually going to just do one quarter of this and then use the circular pattern tool to create the other three quarters. So knowing that, I'm going to start off with some construction lines. I'm basically going to cut this thing into quarters with these construction lines. Because I know if I'm doing a pattern that the very beginning and the very end need to end uh, essentially at the same place so that the pattern is smooth. And these lines are going to help me do that. All right, so my first arc is going to, and I, I'm actually going to try and avoid clicking on these other um, arcs that come in because they really only serve to mess you up a little bit. Now, I am going to want all my outside arcs tangent to this edge that I have projected, and I can do that while I'm drawing if I'm careful. Now, that was supposed to not be construction, but that's an easy fix. So in this one quarter, I want one, two, three outside arcs. So keep that in mind. Now, depending on how I drop this arc, you can see that sometimes I can get that tangent to come in. Sometimes it doesn't. Just got to do what works. You can always put it in after if it's not working. Now I'm just spitballing these. I'm not trying to connect them to anything else other than that outside curve, but even that doesn't work all the time. And the last one is there. Now this other one that came out construction, I actually can reverse that pretty easy. Now the first thing I'm going to do is tangent all these to each other. Remember, if I want smoothness, tangents are what I need. Now these two didn't connect. I'm going to use my coincident constraint to do that and put my tangent in there. Now is also a good time to tangent the very end point or the starting point. Well, I take it back the arc to these lines we've created. That's going to help us uh, make these well. I'm also going to tangent that outside edge so this is like the edge of the crown to these outside arcs. So there's a bunch of tangent relationships you need to establish. Now I'm going to use my equals to make sure these are all the same size. I'm going to start with my outsides, 
then I'm going to do my insides, and then I'm going to do one across to get them all the same size. Now here's where this other guide arc comes into uh, use. I'm going to use the inside arcs, just like the outside arcs have this circle on the outside to be tangent to. I'm going to do the same thing with this inside arc. And it's not going to serve you know, a purpose like the outside as far as our extrusion. It's just helping me keep everything together. I'm going to do uh, one more guide circle and that is going to be for the endpoints. So this guide circle is going to be where all the endpoints are. And this is just going to help everything uh, be the same size. So instead of a bunch of, of dimensions, we're going to use some construction tools. Okay. I felt like that did it. So here we're fully constrained without any dimensions at all. That is something that takes a little practice, but uh, it's really nice to be able to do that when you need to. Now there's this check here, 172.3. I'm going to check and see what ours looks like. So I'm going to click endpoint, center point, endpoint. Let's see what I have. I'm actually at 165. Uh, let me try the outside and see if that's the same or different. 165. Let's do a pattern and see if that works. So circular pattern tool, select all the geometry I want to replicate. Pick select my axis. And let's see what happens here. All right, that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to go ahead and extrude it and see if it works. If there's any uh, problems when you're extruding, um, it won't extrude. So. This is going to help us understand if we did this correct or not. Whoops, got a little bit too much there. All right, instead of having to click all those, I can make it a little easier on myself. This outside circle, which looked like it was from the base. If I don't have one, I can import one. But if I just make it not construction, I can actually make that one construction. That's going to be much easier to extrude. It's just simply inside or outside instead of having to click all those profiles. Now the depth here needs to go to where you get the complete cut. I don't want to go so far as to where I'm cutting other things, but really anywhere in this range is fine. So let's go ahead and cut that and see what it looks like. That actually looks really good. All my arcs are even. So I guess that 165 degrees was close enough to that 172. You know, based on uh, input, I can change that number to reflect more uh, what we're getting as an average, but I would say that it's pretty close. Now, I always want to turn off the visibility on other objects when I'm done with them. But if I'm looking here at the scalp, that actually looks really good. And I can always double check and make sure I have 12, but I'm certain I do. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yep, 12. All right, so that's how to do the extrude, extrude cut crown. The last one is simply to put your initials and have my students do the period here. Simply start a new sketch, grab your text tool, drag a box, and let's put in what we want. Now here's one place students always get, people always get messed up, is you have to highlight this before you change it. Otherwise it won't change. And I'm actually going to go oh, probably 8 millimeters. So I have plenty of space to get a nice large one on here. Now I need to rotate this. So let's see, I'm going to rotate here. Center point there. Oh, that'll work. And it's very easy to just drag. That's uh, about the perfect size. 
Remember, if you're 3D printing this, these have to be larger than I don't know, at least five millimeters to really print out well. The bigger, the better, and five minimum. Five millimeters minimum. Simple extrude cut on these guys. I usually go in about a millimeter and a half. I think on here I have it listed as 1.6. Your preview always shows you you can get a nice little cut in there. I could have it slightly less. I could do, you know, 0 0.8, 0 0.4 even, and it would be fine. But let's go with the 1.6. All right. Well, that is it. That is the queen piece in a nutshell. Hope yours turns out well. These are great for 3D printing, and you can always change the scale. But this thing is probably about, oh, I don't know, just over uh, about two inches tall, maybe two and a quarter inches tall. It only takes about an hour on most machines, maybe, maybe faster if you run a high uh, speed. But great little project.